In this video, we're going to talk about Unity attributes that you can use to clean up your inspector. So using attributes, we can make a clunky inspector that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this, so it's a lot more clean. This won't change how your game runs at all, but it will make it a lot easier for you to work in the inspector, as well if you have a designer or anyone else working on the game, it'll make it a lot easier for them to use it without having to know exactly what everything is. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll keep updates coming as fast as I can. Let's jump right into it. So this is a simple player controller I made. I just made a whole pile of variables that came off the top of my head that you might use in a player controller script. So this is very basic, really cluttered. I just made them in the order that I thought of them. Nothing fancy here. But I do see this in a lot of jams and a lot of people's games where they just make a whole pile of variables in their script. There's no organization. A lot of the time they aren't even grouped together in categories, like all of your speed variables in the same area. They're just kind of scattered about. And it really makes your workflow hard to deal with as well if other people are working on your game and they have to modify these values, you're gonna be searching back and forth in the inspector trying to find the right ones. So this video is just gonna show you how you can simplify that and organize it a bit to help out. If you aren't aware of what attributes are, you probably use some and you don't know it. So in this example here, I'm using serialized field. That's actually an attribute. If you're not aware of what it does, if you have a private variable, Normally you wouldn't see it in the inspector at all unless you add serialized field in front of it. This will keep the variable private so other scripts can't access it, but you can still see it and change it in the inspector on your object. So all of the variables in this example don't need to be accessed by other scripts, so I made them all private and I just added the serialized field attribute so we can see them in the inspector. So as I mentioned, all these variables are private, but on the first variable here of type character types, I don't have private in front of it. I just wanted to show by default, all variables will be private. So you don't actually have to type the word private if you want to keep it that way. Uh, as an example, I usually use private myself just so it's very clear, but we could put private in front of this character types. And the way it is here is the exact same as if you didn't have private. So if you remove the serialized field and you leave this as private, and then if we save that and go into the inspector in Unity, you're gonna see that variable is actually gone. So we can't see it in the inspector here unless we use serialized field. So I'm just gonna add that back in, save it. And now if we go back into Unity, now you see the character type. So that's what serialized field does. So if you don't wanna make your variable public, but you wanna modify it in the inspector, just add serialized field attribute in front of it, and that's all you need. So that was the first attribute I wanted to show. Now the next one is gonna be header, and all attributes go inside square brackets. And then for header, we just wanna put an open close parentheses and our double quotes. And now whatever we type in here is gonna be the header. So I'm just gonna call this one UI, and I'm gonna put any user interface components related to the player in this category. Now I'll look through my variables for anything relating to the UI and I'm gonna move it up top under the UI header. So the first one I'm gonna take is the character avatar, which is a sprite. That's just an image you would display on the user interface for the player. So let's move it up there. Now let's keep looking for anything else related to the UI. So I have a game object of character stats panel. And that's just a reference to a panel I would use to display the player stats. So I'm gonna move that up to UI as well. Now, if I save this and go back to Unity, now you can see you have a little header called UI of the name you typed in, and it just kind of spaces it and keeps everything in a group this way. Now, another attribute we can use here to help group things together, right after those values for the UI header, I'm gonna put one called space, and then inside here, you put how many pixels you wanna space it by. So I'm just gonna put 20 in here, and notice with attributes, you don't put a semicolon after because it's not actually a, a command. It's just an attribute that goes before a variable. So now if we look at our inspector, now we have a little gap before the next group. So you can see it's already starting to look a little bit better and cleaner. So let's go back and let's make another. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna make a new header called locomotion. And in here, I'm gonna put anything relating to movement of the player. 
Let's put a space of 20 again after this so we keep each one kind of in their own little group. So you should get the idea of how this works. So I'm just going to speed this part up a bit and I'm just going to move anything relating to movement, jumping, running, any of that into locomotion. You can play around with the spacing values and find what you like and prefer on that. For character type, I'm just going to move that to the top. I don't think that one really needs a category. I'm going to move the player bio up to the top too, because I think any player info and biography should be at the top. And then let's make another header, and I'm just going to call this one combat, and I'll put anything combat related in here. Okay, so I'll move everything for combat into here, and then I'm going to make another header and call this one particles. And then I'm going to move any of the particle systems into this one, and you should get the idea, so I'm just going to speed this part up a bit and you can watch the code if you want to follow along exact or just make it however you want yours, make your own custom headers. This is all for your preference, so you don't have to follow any of this exactly. You'll get the picture. Okay, so with that done, let's save this and go and take a look. And you can see already it's starting to clean it up a lot where you have everything broken up in categories, you have little headers, so you can quickly look and you know where you need to find something. So if you're trying to find a you know, player death particle system, you don't have to start browsing through looking line by line. You can just go to the particle category and you know it's gonna be in there. Now the next attribute I'm gonna show you, let's go and look at this string player bio that we have. So if we go into Unity and we look at this in our inspector, you notice it's just a, a small little line of text. You can't really see much in there. You can't do much for editing. If we add another attribute on this line, and you can put more than one attribute on a line here, so we can put another one, and we're just gonna put text area. And then if we go back into Unity, now you're gonna see you have this big text box that you can type in. And if you put multiple lines, it's gonna add a scroll bar on the side. So you can at least see what's going on and make it a lot easier to read if you're writing a, a long string in here. The next attribute we're gonna use is called range. And this is going to let you set a minimum and a maximum value for any number variable. So let's just go to our run speed here and we'll put range. And then you want to put the minimum value and a maximum. So I'm just going to make those up right here. And then let's save this and go back to Unity and see how this looks. Now we have this handy little slider bar for our run speed. And you can move between the minimum and the maximum that you set. So this one's really handy if you have, say, a level designer working with you and you don't want them to set values outside of a certain range. You can just add the slider. So when they're play testing, they can just drag the values down or up, whatever they want, but it'll stay within the range that you set. I'm just going to go and set range on the next group of variables here under locomotion and just pick some random values for them. And now if we go and look at this in the inspector, we're going to see now we have a whole group of slider bars that we can use to set values. Just to keep with the theme, I'll do the same for the combat variables here. And the last attribute I want to show you here is called tooltips. So this is where we can actually add some info to either the, the person creating the game or the designer or whoever's working on it. If either they forgot what certain variables are in the inspector or if it's for like I said, a designer where he doesn't necessarily know what everything is. In here, you can add an attribute called tooltip, and then inside the quotes, whatever you type here is what's gonna show in the inspector. So for example, this character types, we can just put a, a quick little blurb in here of what they're gonna see in the inspector explaining what this variable is. So we can just do something like, this is the type of player create character that was created, and then we can do something similar for the player bio. We can just change the text that's in there. So obviously in this example, player bio is pretty straightforward, but if it was something more confusing, this is how you could do it. So if we save this now, now just mouse over the character type as well as the player bio, and you'll see the little pop-up message for the tool tip now. I'm just gonna throw a few more tool tips in some of the other variables quickly. And while doing that, I will include this script on uh, GitHub. I'll put a link below. So if anybody does actually want to download it, you can just get it from there and take a look at it. But I think most of this is pretty straightforward once you see it, but the script is there if you want it. And now we have a much cleaner inspector we can work with here. So you are a bit limited using attributes. Uh, these are the main ones I covered, but if you want to get more advanced with this, you can make your own custom inspectors 
Uh, you can use something called Unity Editor scripts, and these scripts will actually run in the editor. You don't need to be running your game. So you can start adding different UI components on your, your interface for the uh, inspector. You can add buttons that actually do things when you click them. So if that's something you like and you want to start working on that, I would highly suggest looking up Unity Editor scripts. And if that's something you guys like, leave messages below and I can try making some basic videos on how to do that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.